Hey, hello, what's up everybody? Uh, welcome back for another lesson in the Swift UI Firebase chat application series. I uh, hope you guys are having a good day and I hope you're ready to continue on with our course here. Uh, last video, I showed you guys how to create an account and also log into your account uh, using Firebase Auth. Uh, if you guys missed that video, you can find a link to that lesson in the description below. Uh, today's video, what exactly do we want to do here? Well, I want to go ahead and start integrating storage inside of our application. Uh, you'll see that in the completed version of our app, I can actually store images for our user by clicking on the image picker here. Uh, clicking on the image here, I can kind of show it when the image picker slides down. Uh, if I type an email and password, create an account, uh, this is actually going to associate this image for this particular user. Uh, I'll show you guys exactly how to do that right now inside of our Xcode editor. Uh, currently, login view looks like this. We have create account. Uh, down below, somewhere inside of our view, uh, we have this button, uh, this button here that's specified by the person fill. And every time I press this button, right, I want to present some kind of image picker like this here. Uh, how exactly do you do this inside of Swift UI? You might be wondering. Well, showing an image picker is actually pretty easy. And uh, there's already a lot of tutorials out there on how to do this. So uh, what I'll do today is I'm just going to borrow some code. Uh, I have this component called an image picker already created inside of Finder. I'm just gonna drag it inside of here. Uh, go ahead and save that and you should be fine. Uh, you'll see that the image picker, there's not a lot of code inside of it. Uh, it's simply an image picker component. Uh, it's subclasses, or I guess in this uh, the case of a struct, it conforms to the view controller representable uh, protocol. And then inside of here, you have a binding of an optional image. Uh, to make the picker show up, uh, there's a lot of code below. So you want to make your controller, which is some kind of UI image picker controller. You can kind of see it here. And then it uses a coordinator class guy. Uh, this guy allows us to pretty much monitor the image that's being picked using these two methods here. Again, there's a lot of tutorials online on how to do this. So uh, just, you know, do your own research and you should be fine. Uh, this image picker, I'll show you how to use that now. Uh, going back into login view here, you'll see we have our preview here uh, below on line 46 is our button. Uh, the way I'm going to show the actual image picker is really, really simple. I'm going to first go inside of the buttons action, which are, uh, which are these two braces here. And then let's say should show, let me see, should show image picker. And I'll just call toggle on this Boolean here. Uh, this Boolean, I'll have to create it as a state variable. So. Let me just say state var, uh, set this to false. Uh, that should be okay. I might need a little more space, so I'll close out of that. Uh, here is my should show image picker, and it's going to toggle uh, this guy to true every time I hit this button here. So the next thing I will do is I'm gonna show something called a full screen cover. And you know, this is really simple once you see the code. Uh, you'll need to provide it with the Boolean of uh, show, picker, whatever you call it. Uh, dismiss, I don't really need it, so I'll just use nil. Uh, the cover that you are going to show is the code you'll use here. So it can be anything that you want, really. So let me just show this as an example. Example cover. And I think that's all I need. Uh, full screen cover is just a view modifier that you can attach on any type of Swift UI view and the code should be fine. I'm going to hit the stop button here and hit the play to make sure it runs correctly. I'll hit the button in the middle. And then once I do that, you'll see my example cover, uh, pretty much cover full screen <laughs> as the view modifier specifies. 
Uh, as you can guess already, I am going to show my image picker like that. And then I will uh, use some kind of optional image binding. Uh, you might be asking, how do I generate this binding, right? Well, it's very straightforward. You'll just create a state variable that you can use the binding on. Uh, I'm gonna call this the image. And uh, depending on how you set up your image picker, you'll have to use the, um, the actual class instead of here. Uh, in other words, I'll use this as the uh, UI image optional, like so. That looks uh, pretty good to me. Uh, last thing to do is to uh, simply pass in the image here. And once I have that, I believe my code uh, should be okay. Uh, the preview should start running again. Uh, if you see the uh, little spinner guy spinning for forever, I suppose, just hit a space inside of your view area right here and it's going to force the uh the preview to redraw uh once it redraws you should get this green dot here and then lastly i'll show the actual image picker and you'll see that you can click the image right here and the uh the picker will kind of slide down and dismiss itself okay uh that's pretty much how the image picker is being shown using the full screen cover uh, lastly, we want to make sure that instead of, you know, having this person fill thing right there, you want to show the actual selected image. Uh, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to go back up to the actual image, which is uh, these lines of code there. And then I will simply go inside of the button. The label is right here. I am going to use a V stack just because... Uh, and then finally, I am going to say if let image equals self dot image, uh, that means that I've selected an image using this picker. And then I can simply say image right here and the image view, you can initialize it using an, a UI image type of object. And uh, luckily for us, the image is actually uh, I believe this is called optional binding. It's bound to self.image and everything should be fine. Uh, if I don't have that right, I'm just going to uh, use the person fill, which is what you're seeing here. Uh, if you don't like the blue color, you can use a foreground color of, uh, what do I want to use here? Maybe color of label. Uh, that's black when you're in light mode and white if you're in dark mode. Okay, so you can see it's black. I can click on that. You'll see your image is extremely large and uh, this is kind of what you have. So pretty good stuff so far. Um, again, if you guys are curious as to how the image picker works, uh, leave a question down below. There, again, there's a lot of uh, different tutorials online on how to build the image picker. So I'm just going to uh, skip that for today's lesson. All right, lastly, uh, you see that for this image right here, right? If you don't want to have that large uh, image, you can say mm, aspect fill, I believe. So scale aspect fill, I think I like using this one. And that should be okay. I think I wanna use that. And then uh, let's see, what is it complaining about? So I believe it's scale fill. So scale to fill is the view modifier that I wanna use. Uh, finally, I am going to use the resizable modifier and give it a frame as well. Uh, let's use the value of uh, 64 and height of 64, like so. And then I should be okay. Uh, maybe I want to give this a corner radius as well as 64. I think that's fine. Okay, a lot of code, and I will test to see how things are at the moment. I'm going to select that, and now you see this right here. I think I can move that over here and use a value of uh, maybe 32, and let's kind of see what I have right now. So again, uh, depending on how large you want your image to be, you can just modify this to be whatever you want. Uh, maybe this can be 128, and this is 128 as well. And this, you can bump this up to 64. 
Um, obviously, modify these values to whatever fits your uh, design needs and, you know, uh, you'll be okay. Uh, lastly, if you want to, I don't know, give this a stroke border, you can kind of do something like this. Uh, you can try to use a stroke value. I think that's kind of weird. Let's see. Let's see if I can get something to show up here. So uh, maybe it's border. So I always get confused as to what the heck that thing is trying to do here. Uh, maybe it's color black and a value of three. I think that can work. Uh, so you'll see uh, using a border like that, you get this square border. If you want to get a round border, you can use something like the overlay. Uh, I believe it's overlay something like this and the rounded rectangle. You can use the corner radius of uh, whatever you have up there. I think that should be fine. And then you can, I believe it's something like uh, stroking this thing with the width right here of color dot black and maybe a value of three. So you know, if you want to stroke it with a circular thing, you can do that. And then you can click on the flower and you'll have the stroke there as well. Okay, um, again, you know, just some minor details you want to add if you are, uh, you know, more design oriented. Okay, so now that you have a handle on your image being selected here, you're going to want to upload it to Firebase whenever you uh, register your account here. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, whenever you create your account, right, you're executing this uh, function below called create new account, which is on line 140. Uh, if you want to upload this into Firebase storage, you can simply do this here. You're going to want to uh, make sure you invoke a function after you've created your user. Uh, if you don't invoke it, uh, if, if you're not logged in, then you're not going to, to be able to upload an image to Firebase storage. So what I'll do is I'm going to say persist, so persist image to storage, and then I will call a self in front of that. And I will, uh, you know, like usual, create your private function, which is right there. So question now is uh, what kind of code should go inside of persist image storage? Well, typically you're going to want to use uh, storage and storage like that and get a reference on your storage with some kind of path like this. Uh, again, I showed you this in the last video, but whenever you're working with a preview, it's very hard to uh, use the storage and auth objects like this. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Firebase Manager uh, class uh, singleton again, and just call this storage object on it. And then uh, that singleton is actually right here. So uh, I'm gonna use this as the storage object. And then during the initialization phase, I'm going to create the storage like this, uh, using the storage and stores like that. Again, the reason why I'm doing this is because for the preview, if you don't set up something similar to this, uh, it's going to crash. So don't uh, ask me why that is, but that's what I've noticed uh, for the past couple of months. Okay, I'm gonna go back down to persist image to storage now. And all you have to do is you want to generate this reference uh, with some kind of path. Now the path is pretty much a file name. Uh, you can get the file name from maybe uh, UUID string like this. You can do something like that. Or you can, maybe it might be better if you get it from the actual user's ID. So in other words, you can say guard let uh, UID equals Firebase Manager, uh, Firebase Manager dot share dot auth dot current user dot UID. So that's how you get a handle on the uh, current user's UID. And then uh, what you want to do is you, uh, this is a string value. You might want to just use the file name as the user's ID. Some people like to do that, uh, seems to be fine. So set this to the ref and you can use ref and I'm going to say put data. Uh, I think we want to use this one right here. Allows us to put data and also access to the uh, completion handler. I am gonna double click on that. You'll get your autocomplete there. 
Uh, now what I want to do is, uh, I need to get the data from something, uh, metadata, it's optional, so I'm going to use nil. For the actual data, you can use this again, guard let. Uh, I will call this image data equals self dot image dot JPEG data. Uh, compression quality, what do you guys think is a good value? Maybe 0 0.5 and I'll say else return. Uh, this is gonna generate the image data from my image and I'll just paste that there. Finally, for the completion, hit enter there. And here is my metadata. And then here is my potential error. So uh, if let error equals error, I'm gonna say self dot, uh, I'll just say login status message equals fail to uh, push image to storage. And then I will also uh, append the error to that message. And then I'll just bail if that happens. Uh, if everything is going to work out correctly, you can call ref.downloadURL to actually fetch the URL, which is right here. And then uh, just to enter, you'll get your URL. And again, the potential error like this. So I will use this bit of code again. Uh, we'll say, instead of this, we'll say fail to retrieve uh, download URL, uh, like that. Okay, and then lastly, I'm gonna say, say self.login status message. This is the success case of being able to store your image inside of Firebase storage. Uh, what this means is successfully stored, so stored, image with URL. And here is the URL that we've received from the completion of download URL. And then you can use something called absolute string on it. Uh, this is an optional, so we'll have to nil coalesce it down to the empty string. Okay, uh, that should be fine, I guess. <laughs> you know, every time I type in so much code, I have to kind of pray to make sure the compiler works. Uh, finally, I'll hit a space one more time right there. You'll see the green dot finally show up. And then now we are able to kind of get ready here. I'll select the waterfall. Uh, LBTA user two at gmail.com, one, two, three, one, two, three. I will create my account. You'll see that I successfully uh, created my user, but you see my image error shows up right here. Uh, it says that uh, we are 404 and message not found. And uh, we see some other errors right here that the object does not exist. So if you get this error, uh, the reason why that's happening is because inside of, I believe Firebase storage right here, going back to your console, uh, you'll need to make sure that you hit get started and you're just gonna want to use these uh, these rules is what this is called. So just hit next, you'll be fine. And then, um, you know, just select the default options and you should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. It's going to create some kind of bucket for all of my storages. Uh, this is just how Google and their services handle uh, file storing. Um, so it generates a bucket in the background Hopefully by maybe five to 10 seconds, we are gonna be ready to upload images and uh, watch to see if they're persisted correctly. Okay, you'll see your rules here, your usage is right here. If, you, uh, if you're wondering how, how much Firebase storage is gonna cost you, uh, that's an interesting tab to look at. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my application now. Uh, let's kind of repeat the process. I will click on that. Uh, LBTA user, what am I on? Maybe three at gmail.com. All right, create account. You will see my user is being created here, successfully created the user. And, uh, you know, after a couple of seconds, you're actually going to upload this image into storage. Uh, this is a very large image. So it takes a couple of seconds. Uh, once we are done, uh, we're able to successfully store our image inside of storage. And then you'll see this URL for your actual image. Uh, if you copy this and load it into the browser, you'll see your image. 
uh, da, 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 maybe I will do that for you here. So uh, absolute string, I'll do this one more time. Uh, let's click on this one right here. So uh, lbta user four at gmail.com, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now I'll create my account. Again, it's going to create the user inside of Firebase. Once I'm logged in, it'll store this inside of the actual storage area. Now, if you actually want to print out the string inside of the console, you'll need to run this inside of the simulator down here. But if you uh, look inside of your storage and hit the refresh, uh, let me say Command R to refresh, uh, you'll see those images being stored right here. So let's see, the images are right here. If you click into this, you'll get a preview somewhere right here. Uh, you can check the file location and you can access the image somehow, somewhere instead of here. And you can click on that, you'll get the file location. I will try to uh, paste that in here. Usually you can get the image to show up, but uh, sometimes I notice that the image doesn't actually show in this preview area. So again, what I'll do is I will move this out of the way. I'm going to run this inside of my simulator. Uh, hopefully this is going to work. Um, you never know during these recordings what will work and what will not. So here we go. We'll give this a shot here. Click on this and we are going to click on the doggy doggy. Uh, LBTA user user five at gmail.com. All right, so uh, normally you might want to present some kind of a loading HUD or progress view while you're busy, but you know, we'll you know, might be able to do that later. I'm going to copy the actual URL from the console below, uh, go inside of here, and I will replace the URL using the one we have in Firebase, I'm going to allow the actual download. It's going to store inside of this area here. It should be that guy. I will double click on that. You will see the preview. And uh, here is the lovely doggo image that we just uploaded. Okay, that is pretty much how things are going to work for today's lesson. Uh, again, everything is uh, stored inside of this Firebase storage area. Make sure to uh, actually initial, initialize it inside of the console area. You should be good to go. And then using this bit of code here, we're able to store the actual image inside of storage. Um, if you want to you know, inspect the image picker code a little bit further, just look inside of it. Uh, there's some trickery that you have to understand with this coordinator class, but it's really easy once you get the hang of it. Even Apple has a tutorial on their website on uh, what exactly this coordinator guy does. But as you can see, it just conforms to the, uh, the usual image picker controller delegate method. And then we have this uh, image picker did pick and did cancel method right here. Okay, that's gonna be it for today's video. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too long. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Ciao.